Hi guys, this is Echo Sourx with another tutorial for MassiveSynth.com. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, you can sign up at youtube.com forward slash toots. That's T-U-T-S. So today's tutorial, we're going to be checking out a tip and trick for the key track filtering inside of Massive. If you don't know what key tracking is, that it's literally tracking the movement up or down on a MIDI keyboard in a way that's usually a linear fashion, but you can oftentimes change that as you can in Massive. And it's tied to whatever it is trying to track, whether it's the filter, the oscillator, or the pitch. So if there's no key tracking on, on a synth, then as you played a note up and down the keyboard, you're not going to get a, di a difference in pitch. It's just going to play what it's just going to play one note over and over. Well, some synths like Massive can key track different things. And that can be a very powerful sound design tool. And there's three instances of it in inside of Massive as well as a macro control that you can apply to any modulation source that you want. So that you get you have uh, key tracking on the fil on the envelopes, you have the oscillator key tracking here and you have the filtering key tracking. This tutorial we're going to be looking at how you can clean up a little bit of your mix using this key tracking. So with this filtering, you see this line coming across. This line represents the frequency of the cutoff filter and how it's letting those frequencies through. So you can see the lower notes on the keyboard here is letting through less of the of the filter. But at certain points, it's, it's kind of a linear function. So it's as you go up the keyboard, it's not a noticeable difference. I have a lead pulled up right now. If I play a really low note, really high note, it starts to become noticeable when I'm spanning around three octaves. But when you're playing a pass that's kind of in, in the similar voicing, That's not as noticeable of a jump. However, in a context of a mix, this can actually really help clean things up. Because once you start to lay down your your arrangement and you get to the part of the of your process where you're going to be looking at your mix and you're kind of going to be looking at the techniques on how to clean up the frequencies and you're going to be carving your EQs, with a synth, especially like one like Massive, you can always jump back into the synth and apply some key tracking depending on what your sound is doing in the context of your song or production. So I have a really simple little uh, ditty kind of worked up here. There's a lead patch playing this. And then I have another instance of Massive playing this bass patch. And I was going to show you some really simple and quick ways to kind of clean up the filtering of both those sounds so they gel a little bit better. So let me play them how they are now together. All right, so let's talk about the bass first. So there's where that first note is. Second note's a little lower, and then it gets lower, and then it goes up, and it goes up even higher. So that note right here, you, you can tell that that filter, the because the, we're using the DAF filter type, which is essentially kind of like a low pass type of filter, it acts the same way. It is, you can see on that, that last note that we played, we're, we're in this area when we were started out down here. So as this line represents the filter is opening up more on that note. Well, this is a bass patch. And this, with what I was playing, I know this isn't an amazing production, but what I was playing, it doesn't need to be opening up because what that's going to do is it's actually going to introduce some more high frequency content into the sound via the filter. And if you have it mixed with a lead and the lead's the focus of that element in the song at that current time, you don't want that necessarily. So if you have a instance that plays that spans maybe one and a half octaves or, or a whole octave on a bass patch, then it might be really smart to do this, which is one reason why the key track filtering is a part of Massive. So what you can do is just play it. And I'll drag up the low section. So now as it climbs, it's the exact same amount of filtering. So it's not letting through any more of the high frequencies. So it will blend nicer with the lead sound. And once you get into your EQ edits, it'll actually be even cleaner sound. So let's look at this same idea using this lead progression. And you'll, and I purposely played it with, so it's spanning multiple off octaves. And in EDM productions, that's usually the case with these pluck type leads. So let's, let's solo this and listen. So you can see this range right here. 
it's in the same range ish as the bass. So let me mute. Let me mute all of these top notes here, and I'll show you what I mean. So if I mute all of of these, or just some of these, real quick in the uh, editor right now, and then I play this patch with that bass patch, you'll you'll hear that it's in the same frequency range. Hear that? So what you can do with the key track filtering is you can essentially just say and look at it. And again, this is always going to be in context of your mix and your song. You can basically just look at how it's functioning with the bass. So with this specific sound. I don't want as much cutoff on that. I'm actually going to turn it down. So what I can do here is I can drag this little, little node in. And now you'll hear less of that filter. So it was more like this. And then it will play a little bit better with these high, higher notes. Which is pretty cool. So let's play that together. Now I'm going to drag it in just a little bit more. So now you can hear the bass a lot more. And you can hear the bass, not it's, not it's not louder, but you're just hearing more of the frequencies that matter. This lead still has the low frequency content, but it's not going to be overly bright and overly big. So now it's not fighting with itself. Now the mid-range notes aren't competing with the same filtering frequencies as the lower range. So again, this is a subtle effect, but it's one that with, imagine if I had five and five sounds stacked together or six, it starts to add up over the course of a production. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't checked out MassiveSynth.com, head on over there. Tons of great things, Massive. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.